In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the rear wheel bearings on this Audi A4 Quattro. This is going to be located behind the rear wheels. Let's get into it. In the trunk, lift up where the spare tire is. You can see where the toolbox is right here. Just lift the handle, slide this out. You can open this up. Inside, here's the ring that we're looking for. Using the tool from the trunk, we're gonna pull the center cap off. Just in that hole there, just grab that. You can pull the center cap right off. Using a 17 millimeter socket, take the lug bolts out. Before you get to the last one, just hold the wheel on so it doesn't fall. Take that off. And grab the wheel and it comes right off. We're going to remove the caliper and the bracket all together. Use a eight millimeter hex socket. Take this bolt out right here. that bolt out. Now there's another bolt underneath here. I'm just going to use the eight millimeter hex, but I'm just going to use a wrench on it just so I can get in there. And it just has to be loose. You don't have to pull it out all the way. And you can pull the caliper off. And we're just gonna hang it with a caliper hanger. There we go. Now I'll take the rotor off. There should be a screw that you can use a T30 socket to take that off. I just have a lug bolt on here. So take that screw out. If your vehicle has it, grab the rotor, slide it off. If it's stuck on there, just use a hammer and just hit on the surface. It should pop right off. I'm gonna take this shield off. I'm gonna use a T30 socket. Take these screws out. So I'm gonna have to tap this in a little. There we go, take those out. And slide the shield off. Now we're going to remove the ABS wheel speed sensor. I'm going to use a five millimeter hex socket. Take this screw out. There we go. Take the screw out. And just grab the sensor, wiggle it back and forth. Try to get it to break free. Now you want to pull this sensor out just so nothing gets damaged. Unfortunately, our sensor is frozen in here, so it's not coming out. We can try to wiggle it back and forth, but it's just not budging. So we're going to leave ours in, but it is a good idea to pull this out just so it doesn't get damaged. I'm going to take a couple of the lug studs, put these in the hub. I'm going to take a pry bar and we're going to loosen this and take a 17 millimeter hex or H17. I'm going to loosen this up. Just be careful. They're extremely tight. Let's get it loose. Comes off pretty easy. Take that out. 
We're going to remove this shield underneath the vehicle near the differential. We're going to use a six millimeter hex socket. Take these screws out. There's one more up top. Just get that one in. And slide that out. We're gonna remove the axle bolts. We're gonna use an M10 triple square socket. And it's right up against the boot, so you don't really want to use an impact on that. Or you can take a piece of plastic just from a bottle, just from like an old washer bottle. Stick that there. Then if you um, take it out, it's not going to ruin the boot. You can do that. Loosen this up. So this Everything's turning, so I'm going to have to use a pry bar to hold the hub from spinning. And actually, before we take this out, it's a good idea to mark this. Just mark this just with a, with a paint stick or a crayon. Just so when you put it back together, it's the same as when you took it apart. and those bolts up. You don't actually have to take them out. They just need to be loose like that. We'll do the same with the other ones. Okay, all those bolts are loose. We're gonna remove this bolt. We are gonna have to make sure this cam goes back in the same location. So we're just gonna make a mark right there. And after you're done this job, it's a good idea to get an alignment done just in case some of the adjustments aren't exactly correct. Using an 18 millimeter wrench on the bolt, 18 millimeter socket on the nut. And when you pull this bolt out, it's uh, recommended that you replace the bolt. Take the nut off. Take that washer off. Just gonna use a pole jack underneath the knuckle. Just raise up a little bit. Okay. Tap the bolt out. Just be careful, it is gonna pop out a little bit. Just use a punch, pop that out. We'll just pry this out while we lower this down. I'm just gonna put the pole jack underneath. Just take some of the tension off the shock. And then we're gonna take the shock bolt out. And using a 21 millimeter socket and a 21 millimeter wrench, take this bolt out. Take that bolt out. Take a pry bar, pry the shock out. There we go. Just move the shock out of the way. Take the pole jack, lower it down. I'm just going to use a pole jack to support the exhaust right here. That's good. Above the muffler, there is a hanger. We're going to take those off. Use a 13 millimeter socket. Take these bolts out. And we'll do the same on the other side. Now I'll lower this down.
and you want to push the axle out a little bit, you can just slide it out of the way. You can pull it out if you want to. Just get it out of the way or just wire tie it out of the way. Take the pole jack out. Now I'm just gonna move the pole jack over here and raise up on the knuckle. Just be careful. And then temporarily we're gonna put this bolt back in just so that we can have this stable. that down. I got a screwdriver through there. You could just leave a screwdriver through there. You don't have to actually put the bolt. That's fine. And I'm going to lower the pole jack. Now with a slide hammer attached, we're going to pull the hub out. I'm going to take a wire brush. We're just going to clean up the area right in front of the bearing. It'll just make removing it a lot easier. Now there's no snap ring in there. This is all cleaned up. I'm just gonna take some rust penetrant and just let it soak for a little bit. Just gonna help with the removal process. That's good. Now we're gonna take some different adapters and some cups and from the inside, you wanna find one that's a little bit smaller than the bearing. Not too much smaller, but there is a lip on the inside so you don't wanna hit that lip on the inside. So put that inside and get the right cup size on the outside. You want the cup to be bigger than the bearing, so that's going to fit right there. Gonna slide through there and put the nut on. Now we have the right tools in place. I'm just gonna snug this up a little bit. I need this. Oops. This lined up. Tighten this down. There we go, popped right out. Bearings in there. I take the new bearing. The inside races are different sizes. You can see that if you take the old hub, the bearing will just slide easily on one side, but if you flip it around, it doesn't slide in at all. Now the slide that's tighter is gonna go towards the inside, and that's why when we pulled the hub off that the inner race wasn't still stuck to the hub. It's because the race right here is larger and it's not going to stick to it. So you want to make sure the tighter race is on the inside. So now we're going to install the race very similar to how it came off. You want to clean up this area with a wire brush, just make sure, or even some sandpaper, and just clean that up. And get that settled. Then we're going to take some cups and adapters and you're gonna put an adapter that's as close to the outside as possible. Go
going in and then, a, and then a cup that's a little bigger on the inside. Okay. All right, and now we're just gonna do the same. Just press it in. Just make sure it lines up. All right, that's all the way down. And take that out. Now we're gonna put the hub in. We're gonna do very similar to how we got the bearing in. On the inside, you're gonna want a cup that is small enough that it's right around the race, right there. If you can get one a little smaller, that'd be good. But as long as it's not pushing on the bearing surface. So just want it mostly on the race. Same thing, get that lined up. all the way down. Now loosen it up. Pull that out. Get the axle back in. So to do that, take the screwdriver out. Have to hammer this a little. Separate that. Move the shock out of the way. And slide the axle in. So you're going to have to push it further in so that we can get it past the shock. to the hub. There we go. Get that in place. Now just make sure the inside CV boot is lined up with the axle, with the differential. Just make sure that's there because we're gonna put the shock bolt in next and then this arm. So we want that all lined up. I'm just using the pull jack. Raise up on the suspension. Try to get the shock lined up. Take the bolt. Get that started. Go through the shock. Then this square looking washer is going to go next. And then the nut. it's lined up. Snug it down. Now we're going to torque this bolt to 110 foot-pounds. 
Now we have to slide the upper control arm in place. Just use a hammer. Just give it a tap. And get the bolt in. Let's get the bolt started. It's a little easier. on. Remember we're going to line that up with the line or mark we made. Again make sure the vehicle is close to ride height as possible and we'll torque this to 95 foot-pounds. Lower the pole jack. Now you want to line up the inside CV boot up with the, make sure the mark lines up with the mark that you made coming out and then you can get the bolt started. I'm going to start snugging these down. And before I tighten any others down, I'm going to spin this completely around to the other side. I'll tighten this one down. Oops. Make sure you put that piece of plastic so you don't rip the boot. And once the two sides opposite have been tightened down, then you can go around and start tightening the other ones down. Doesn't really matter which order. All right, now we're gonna go around and torque them. I'm just gonna mark this so I know where I started. And we're gonna torque this to 40 foot pounds. Just gonna spin it, go around to the opposite side. And now we'll go around and torque them all. Torqued, put the shield on, take the bolts, get those started. And we'll tighten those down. And snug those down. Get the exhaust hangers in place, get the bolts started. And tighten those down. Do the same on the other side. Now you want to put the ABS wheel speed sensor back in and get the screw started. And snug that down. Take the backing shield, get the screws started. And 
I'll snug these down. And take the axle bolt. You should use a new axle bolt. And put the pry bar just so it doesn't spin. Right there. We're going to torque this bolt to 147 foot pounds. And then go an additional 180 degrees. If you don't have a torque angle meter, do the best you can. And take the lug studs out. Take the rotor, slide that over the hub. Make sure the hole right here lines up with the threaded hole. This one has a broken screw. Next, you wanna put that screw in. We're just gonna use a lug stud just to hold the rotor on. Take the caliper off the hanger. Slide it over the rotor, make sure the brake pads are spread apart. Take the bolts, get the bolts started, and the one underneath. Now we'll torque that to 55 foot pounds. It's a little tricky, but you can do the same on the bottom. I'll take the lug stud out. And now you can put the wheels on. Take the wheel, line it up, get that started. Snug the bolt down, then you can let go of the wheel, get the other bolt started. Now we're gonna to torque the lug bolts to 90 foot-pounds in a cross pattern to tighten the wheel down evenly. Go around again, double check. It's good. Take the center cap. Where the hole is, you want that lined up with the valve stem. After finishing this installation, it's important to have an alignment Tap done on. on your vehicle. Take the little hook, put it back in the tool kit. And close it up. Put it back where it goes, lift the handle, and put the handle down. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.